A reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam left Jerusalem, and the prophet Ahijah, the Shil Shilonite, met him on the road. The two were alone in the area, and the prophet was wearing a new cloak. Ahijah took off his new cloak, tore it into 12 pieces, and said to Jeroboam, take 10 pieces for yourself, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I will tear away the kingdom from Solomon's grasp and will give you 10 of the tribes. One tribe shall remain to him for the sake of David, my servant, and of Jerusalem, the city I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Israel went into rebellion against David's house to this day. The word of the Lord. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. There shall be no strange gods among you, nor shall you worship any alien god. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. My people heard not my voice, and Israel obeyed me not. So I gave them up to the hardness of their hearts. They walked according to their own counsels. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways. Quickly would I humble their enemies. Against their foes I would turn my hand. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephratha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Names can get very confusing sometimes in the Bible, whether that be Elijah and Elisha, which sometimes they're mispronounced and interchanged by people, but uh, now it gets even confusing with the kings. It was easy when it was a Saul or David or Solomon, but now we're going to get into names that start sounding all alike. Solomon, of course, was the magnificent failure. He did not live up to a right relationship with God and covenantal living. He forsaked the one true God of Israel and allowed 
idolatry to infect the promised land. And because of that, it would have effects. We need to take responsibility for our sin, and unfortunately, it affects our lives, and not just our own lives, but the lives of many others as well. After Solomon died, his son, here's where it gets fun, Rehoboam becomes king. Jeroboam, who's mentioned in today's reading, was the master architect under Solomon who had designed the temple and the palace, and he was also the foreman of the forced labor that Solomon had to have to have all those magnificent building projects during his reign. Unfortunately, one of Solomon's other mistakes, along with turning his back on God, was he picked unfairly on the northern tribes, the ten northern tribes. He used them more in heavy taxation as well as in forced labor, as well as in conscription into his army, and they weren't happy about that. And so after Solomon dies, his son Rehoboam, he not only continues the same policy of his father, he makes it worse. He increases the taxes, and in today's reading kind of picks up from there. Jeroboam, who's from the north, by the way, in a sense, there's a prophecy there that there's going to be rebellion. There's going to be a splitting apart from the north and the south, and that's exactly what happens. The ten tribes of the north will split and become an independent kingdom, and all that will be left in the south, two in the beginning, but then eventually one, Judah. So you'll have Israel in the north and Judah in the south. That gets confusing as well, because now we have two kingdoms and two lines of kings, and Jeroboam becomes the king of the north, while Rehoboam is the king of the south. To make a long story short, what can we spiritualize from this mess? Well, when we are faithful to God, when we live covenantal living, which means to worship the one true God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself, because that's really the summation. Jesus was simply repeating the summation from Deuteronomy. Then there is unity. Then there is strength. But when we turn our backs on God, that brings disunity, division, and that lesson is repeated over and over and over again throughout the Bible, but unfortunately continues to be repeated through the history of mankind all the way to this day. The amazing thing is all our technology we have today should bring us all closer together. Things like cell phones and Facebook and everything else. But are we really closer? or are we becoming more and more isolated from each other and divided? And maybe that's an effect of more and more people who are no longer acknowledging God as where God should be in our lives and replacing God with other things. And that's that idolatry that can easily infect our lives as well. And that brings division. It brings aloneness, and God does not want us to be alone. That's one of the first great observations that God makes in Genesis. It is not good that he should be alone. God wants us to be a community, and ultimately he wants us to be one with him. And we need to do that by living out the covenant. The new covenant, of course, is in Jesus, who comes to restore us, not to divide. And so may he too open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to the oneness of his love and may we be drawn together in that love and unity and not division by loving God and loving our neighbor as ourself. The intercessions are on page 13. Through his cross, the Lord Jesus brought salvation to the human race. We adore him, and in faith we call out to him, Lord, pour out your mercy upon us. 
Christ, rising sun, warm us with your rays and restrain us from every evil impulse. Keep guard over our thoughts, words, and actions and make us pleasing in your sight this day. Turn your gaze from our sinfulness, cleanse us from our iniquities. Through your cross and resurrection, fill us with the consolation of the Spirit. We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning, for the repose of the souls of James and Kathleen Markovsky, and let us also remember the deceased priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Theophil Malkowski, 1934, and Father Louis Van Ophel in 1945. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, pour out your mercy upon us. Lord God of heaven and earth, hear the pleas of your children and grant us relief from our burdens. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 